They also have culture. They pass information along generationally to their young. But today what we see is that these amazing creatures have been reduced to almost Frankenstein species. What we see here on the right is a modern day broiler chicken, or chickens that are raised for meat production. About 50, 60 years ago, it took 84 days for a broiler chicken to reach market, market weight of about five pounds. Today, it takes only 45 days for these birds to reach market weight, almost half the amount of time. Um, on the left here, we see an egg-laying chicken. So they have been bred to be very small animals, but to produce an unnatural amount of eggs. In nature, these birds, before genetic manipulation, would only produce about two clutches or two dozen eggs every year. Now these birds are forced to produce over 250 eggs. This takes an extreme toll on the animal's bodies as their bones become depleted of calcium, and many of them suffer from osteoporosis. The egg industry is perhaps the cruelest industry on the face of the planet. Yet when people think about eggs, they think it's an innocent byproduct that doesn't involve the killing of animals. But I tell people, if you're only going to give up one animal product, start with eggs because calorie per calorie, this involves the most suffering. This photograph is of a dumpster behind an egg hatchery. And these are all baby male chicks. Males are of no economic value to the industry because they don't produce eggs and they don't grow large enough to be raised profitably for meat. So every year over 250 million male chicks are killed at hatcheries and this is true for cage-free systems as well. For the females, they perhaps are not as fortunate. They are destined to a life of misery. The first step for most of these birds is what's called de-beaking or as the industry calls it, beak trimming where a portion of their beak is seared off with a hot blade. This, poultry experts say, leads to acute and chronic pain for the birds. This is how 95% of egg-laying hens in this country are raised, in what are called battery cages, because they're lined up in a battery or in a row. Many of these facilities have cages stacked four tiers high, with 150,000 birds confined in each shed. These sheds are oftentimes the length of two football fields, and the, each bird is kept in a cage roughly the size of a file drawer cabinet. And in each one of these file drawer cabinet sized cages is anywhere from five to eight birds. This is where they live their entire lives. These birds can't even spread their wings, they can't walk, they can't perch, they can't build nests. Every natural behavior is basically frustrated by the battery cage. Like animals on all factory farms, when birds become sick or injured, they are left to either suffer to death or they are killed in the cheapest way possible, oftentimes by having their necks broken. It is simply not cost effective for factory farmers to provide individualized veterinary care to animals. This is what a modern day cage-free shed looks like. About 20,000 birds are kept packed into oftentimes windowless warehouses with no access to the outdoors. This is what a modern day broiler facility looks like. This is how about 9 billion chickens are raised, about 20,000 per shed. These birds are so crowded that many of them cannot engage in natural behaviors either. The stench of, stench of ammonia is very pungent for these birds. And as I mentioned before, these animals are bred to grow so large, so fast, that they oftentimes can't support their own weight. So, University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture says, if you grew as fast as a chicken, you'd weigh 349 pounds at age two. So you can only imagine the sort of problems that a two-year-old human would have at that weight. Well, those same problems carry over to these birds. So about 90% of broiler chickens have some sort of problem walking because of their unnatural weight. When it's time for slaughter, these birds are thrown into crates, they're sent to slaughterhouses, and many of them have their throats slit while they're fully conscious. Because poultry, which make up over 95% of animals killed for food in this country, have no federal protection. They are exempt from the Humane Method of Slaughter Act. The pork industry. Pigs are also extremely intelligent animals. Animal behaviors say that they have the intelligence of three-year-old children, human children. 
yet on factory farms they spend their lives in extreme confinement. This is how most pregnant sows are kept, are, are in um, gestation crates. These are two feet metal stalls where they're kept for the duration of their pregnancy, unable to turn around or even lie down comfortably. Many of these animals will literally go insane. They will resort to repetitive bar, bar, um, biting on the bars of their cages, banging their heads up against the sides of the cages as well. They have absolutely no mental stimulation in this confinement. This is what pigs would do in a more natural environment. And in fact, when they're in complete natural settings, they will actually build nests before uh, having their litters. The pork industry says that pigs would kill their, their piglets if they weren't kept in these farrowing devices, which is completely untrue. These, sometimes these animals are tied down. Um, again, these are about two feet wide and deprive the sow of everything that is natural to her. Pigs undergo painful mutilations, such as being castrated without painkillers, having their teeth ripped out of their mouths and their tails cut off. All of this is done without any painkillers. They're then moved on to um, finishing barns, which oftentimes look like this, where they spend their lives until they reach almost 300 pounds and then they are sent to the slaughterhouse as well. So to sum up sort of the situation of institutionalized cruelty versus individual cases of animal abuse, I think Ruth Harrison in her book Animal, animal Machines put it well when she said, if one person is unkind to an animal, it is considered to be cruelty. But where a lot of people are unkind to animals, especially in the name of commerce, the cruelty is condoned and once sums of money are at stake will be defended to the last by otherwise intelligent people. So I will stop there and hand it over to our next uh, participant. Am I next? I can't see the clock. Is someone going to tell me when my time yeah. is up? Yeah. I'll look here. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Matt Roselle. I'm with an organization called In Defense of Animals. We're um, an international animal rights group based in San Rafael, California. Uh, we also have a small office here in Portland. And um, I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you a little bit about fur. Um, in some ways, the fur industry is one of the, I would argue, maybe one of the easier campaigns to work on because um, the cruelty is very egregious, it's fairly obvious to a lot of people, and um, unlike the, what Nathan was just speaking about, um, that a fa you know, factory farming of food, animals used for food, that affects most people sometimes three times a day, fur is a very frivolous product that most people can't afford anyway. So it's easier to um, get people to understand the fur issue because they don't have any internal conflict um, built in. But I think it's really important um, on all these issues to really know your facts and to do your research and your homework. And um, the fur industry, um, because of the massive campaigning of animal rights organizations, has become very clever in their marketing. And uh, the fur industry will tell you or try to convince you that, um, well, you couldn't get quality fur without taking really good care of the animals. We have to um, take excellent care of the animals or we won't get good um, quality fur. It's just, you know, the way it works. Um, I saw firsthand on a fox farm in uh, rural Illinois, in Roanoke, Illinois, how untrue that statement really is. I worked for four months during the pelting season um, on a fox farm where, uh, you know, as with other factory farms, you can smell the place long before you can see it. It is, um, there were a thousand silver foxes being raised on this farm and um, their conditions were, were horrible.